Federal Treasurer Joe Hockey uh, appeared on the ABC's Q&A program last night. Uh, he wasn't the token Liberal, uh, for which Q&A is uh, famous. He was the only Liberal on there. It was just uh, the Treasurer and Tony Jones talking about uh, Joe Hockey's first budget. Some interesting things came out of the discussion with Tony Jones, and one of them was that he made it pretty clear that the government is looking at uh, making some changes to superannuation. Now, they went into the election promising no changes to superannuation, but I think what they're saying now is because of the changes to the pension age, and, and we know that the government wants Australians eventually, by 2035 I think it is, to work to the age of 70, that as they change the pension age, they will need to make changes to superannuation. I think what he's saying, if you read what he was saying last night, is that they're intending to take it to the next election. So I suppose if they don't make the change in this time of government, they have not broken that promise. Uh, but it is an issue which is obviously going to uh, be of concern for people as they get towards retirement age. They'll want to know what the government has in mind here. I'm going to talk to a superannuation expert, uh, Olivia Maranya. Uh, Olivia is with Aspire Retire. She's actually written about this uh, in the press today. Hi, Olivia. Good afternoon, Paul. So what do you think Joe Hockey's got in mind here for super? Well, I think the, the important thing is they left super pretty much alone through the federal budget. So we all know that they're going to probably look at some changes going forward. And, you know, they've talked about increasing the age pension qualifying age to 70. It makes a lot of sense for them to also consider increasing the preservation age. Now, keep in mind your preservation age is all about when you can access your superannuation. Um, currently, somewhere between 55 and 60 years of age is the current legislation. So depending on your um, date of birth, depends on when you can actually access your superannuation currently. So if you are older than 50, um, there are no changes or there are likely to be no changes. That's when your preservation age is 60. If you are younger than 50, this is where you may be targeted where they may increase that preservation age. So you can't get access to your super past um, any time before 60 is what they'll probably look at doing. What's the connection between preservation age and the pension age because a lot of people who are self-funded retirees will say I've been contributing to this for years now why can't I take my money if I'm going to be looking totally looking after myself and not drawing a part pension why can't I take my money when I want to take it well it's it's a great question so a lot of people um, do think that you know with these announcements in the federal budget that they do actually have to work until they're 70 so you can actually access the difference between your preservation age and the pension age pension qualifying age is usually around about 10 years so what that means is you can work until so currently you can work until you're 65 and then get government support which is the age pension currently though you can stop at 55 so depending on your date of birth as early as 55 and you can access your own personal super so you've got 10 years where you can retire at 55 and support yourself through your own superannuation at 65 is when you're actually eligible for some age pension so it doesn't mean that the changes in relation to the retirement age that the government talked about last week in the federal budget is all around your age pension qualifying age it doesn't mean you have to work until you're 70 but if you've got the funds to support yourself personally so with your own superannuation you can retire earlier so around about 10 years the government may look to moving that preservation up which means that Instead of working to 70, you may have to work until, say, 62 or 65. So that's really where they'll start to, to look at, OK, when can people actually access their super? Should we be making it longer? Um, exactly like the retirement age or the age pension qualifying age, this is going to be something, if they do consider it, that will be gradual. It's not going to affect people who are, um, you know, like I said, if you're older than 50 at the moment, it's unlikely that they would change anything around that. Yeah, and they seem to be uh, concerned because Warren Trust, the head of the Nationals, I think alluded to this last year, last week. They seem to be concerned that people might go to retirement early, blew their super, and then throw themselves on the taxpayer and, and say, now I want a pension. Yeah, look, it's interesting that a lot of people sort of talk about that. I, I would sort of disagree that you're not going to find too many people of that generation who will just blow their money um, in order to live off a very small pension from the government. 
Um, look, there may be a small proportion who will do that, but that sort of generation is not the sort of generation that will throw the money away. Um, interesting about what people talked about previously, so you mentioned in relation um, to potential changes. Paul Keating um, got on the TV a few weeks ago and talked about restricting preservation age for some of your super until you were 80 as being a good option. So I, I think the government's got to be really careful around superannuation. A lot of people want that stability and security around superannuation. You know, they want people to look after their own superannuation and and help be less reliant on the government. So I think if there are any changes, it, it may affect some people, traditionally people who are a bit younger. So it's, it's the younger generation that will have to work longer and potentially um, wait until they get access to super. But they would be a little bit... Um, it'll be very detrimental if they start changing the goalposts, particularly for people who are really close to retirement. Okay, that deals with the preservation age side of it. A lot of the economic commentators are pushing the government to look at, at taxing more the, 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 the payments coming out of super funds. So the amount of money that people take when they have retired from their super fund, what's the government likely to do there, if anything? Well, if we sort of cast back a few years ago, the government used to, what you used to take out of super, they used to actually include it in your personal tax return. Um, now, you used to get a rebate against that as well, so you could earn quite a bit of money before you were actually taxed. It, it could be very likely that they turn around and... Um, you know, go back to the way that they used to do it. I think more so, though, the target is the tax within superannuation. So the earnings that your your super actually makes, so currently 15% if you're working, if you're retired and you're taking a pension, it's 0%. It's that 0%, it's that tax-free little haven um, that superannuation when you're retired and you're taking a pension from it that I think the government will look at, even if they move to changing that tax rate. Superannuation is still such a, a concessionally taxed environment that I don't think we We'd see a run on on money. So for me, that would sort of be, you know, the, the earnings in superannuation, I think, would be more so the target. Um, otherwise, it's the money that, that you take out that they'll go back to, to potentially the old rules. Could they look at that tax threshold on the basis of all of your assets, including the family home? I think the family home's a really tough one. So, you know, as much as it does make a lot of sense around, um, you know, people somehow being, you know, assessed in some way around their personal home. I think the cost of the government to take into consideration the value of your home around anything would be something that would be much more costly than the, and then probably the benefit they would get from that. So I would imagine um, it's something that's too costly to sort of implement. Great to talk to you. Thanks a lot for that. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Olivia. Olivia Maragna. Olivia is a co-founder of Aspire Retire Financial Services. Uh, she also writes uh, for the Brisbane Times, financial advice column for the Brisbane Times, uh, and has done so today on retirement incomes. 9221-882 is our talkback number. It's 14 past four.